Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. As I planned this video, I did so with the idea of publishing a Raspberry Pi field test video showing you the integration between the Raspberry Pi, my communications equipment, and how we deploy in the field. Now, I definitely haven't given up on that idea. However, the Raspberry Pi field computer's field test would be better served if we approached it from the perspective of the entire amateur radio field station. So we're going to go over the modifications made to the Raspberry Pi field computer to integrate it into the field station. But we're also going to talk about how the Raspberry Pi field computer fits into the larger perspective of the amateur radio field station. So stick with me and I'll tell you all about it. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. This is the Raspberry Pi which powers my QRP station. It's a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus with passive cooling and a 32 gig Samsung SD card. It's got a real-time clock to help it manage the time. And it's got a buck converter modification to allow it to run off of 12 volts. It also has some pretty insane adhesive Velcro, allowing it to be attached to the top of the radio. Individually, these modifications probably don't seem like a big deal, but collectively, these modifications allow the Raspberry Pi to power an off-grid communication solution. I've also added a USB audio codec with connections to the data port on our HF radio. From there, a USB CAT control was added to the Raspberry Pi, allowing the Raspberry Pi to control the frequency, band changes, filters, push-to-talk, and so on. Finally, a U-Blox GPS was added to augment the real-time clock and provide accurate location. Next, a Wi-Fi access point was added to the Raspberry Pi, allowing me to connect to the Raspberry Pi and my radio wirelessly from anywhere in or around my field station. Now it's impossible to sit here and say any one of these modifications or accessories is more important than the other. But collectively, they are enablers. Now you've been acquainted with my Raspberry Pi, so it's time to take a look at my QRP Go Kit. Currently, my QRP Go Kit is based on the Yaesu FT817ND. One of the first modifications I made was adding a TCXO for greater frequency stability. I also decided to remove the barrel connector from the rear of the radio. That barrel connector was replaced with straight wires coming off the circuit board, then exiting and terminating the case with an Anderson power pole. This alleviates one of the well-documented weak points in the 817 and 818 series. Now, one of the incoming modifications for my Yaesu FD817ND is the 500Hz filter. It's called the CW filter, but that's nonsense. This is perfectly fine and actually recommended for narrow bandwidth data modes. If you can find one, definitely grab one. I'll eventually make a video on using these mechanical filters with narrow bandwidth data modes like 500Hz WinLink and JS8 Call. Now, despite all the fanboy nonsense, the Yaesu FT817 and the Yaesu FT818 definitely need more power. So I've added a 10 watt external amplifier from QRPVER.com to augment the 2.5 watts output with data modes that we have with the Yaesu FT817 and the Yaesu FT818. This means now I can really run 10 watts on data modes without the fear of overheating like we have with the Elecraft KX2. This means we can also keep the 817 or the 818 happy at 1 watt or 2.5 watts into that amplifier for a solid 10 watts out. Now I know there's an awful lot of people who will disagree with me on this point, but I promise you the extra power from this amplifier will do wonders to get your weak signal data mode above the noise floor of the opposing operator. Now I enjoy operating at home just as much as I enjoy operating out in the field. However, the field is the classroom. That's where you're going to learn what you need and what works. The next part of my QRP Go kit is my tablet. You can think of my tablet as simply a wireless screen and keyboard for the Raspberry Pi. 
In actuality, it's a Samsung Galaxy S5e, E for Echo. I took the less expensive Wi-Fi version since I'm only connecting to the Raspberry Pi's Wi-Fi access point. So it can either be used in tablet mode like you see here or as a laptop, which you see most of the time in this video. This tablet has much more processing power than my previous tablet. It's more ergonomic and easier to use, and it's got outstanding video resolution. Now, as an operator who has trouble with his eyes, the resolution of a tablet or laptop is important to reducing my operator fatigue. Now, just in case it isn't obvious, my tablet can seamlessly connect to either of my radios, the Yaesu FT817ND or the Yaesu FT891, both of which are equipped with the Raspberry Pi. Let's move on to portability. I have a few different ways I can carry the QRP Go kit. For the trip to Lapland, the entire kit was going to be integrated into a larger pack, so I didn't need the protection of a Pelican case. Instead, I packed everything inside this Molly hand satchel with the tablet flat down and the radio on top. Now, it's always nice when I can get the tablet and radio to pack flat because that makes it easier to integrate into the rest of my gear. Now, there's still room in this pack for wire antennas, a battery and things like that. But for this trip, I've decided to take one of my DIY lithium iron phosphate solar generators as a single power source for my tablet, for my radio, the Raspberry Pi, for the whole shebang. So this is my 20 amp hour lithium iron phosphate solar generator. It's 256 watt hours and artificially limited to 45 amps output. The pack is actually controlled by my mobile phone or my tablet. But just in case my mobile phone battery is dead, it can still be turned on with a mechanical relay just inside the enclosure. The Yaesu FT817ND, the Raspberry Pi, and the 10 watt amplifier put a load on this battery pack of about 0.88 amps. So I can get away with using some light duty cable to make the connections between my little power pole harness and the battery pack. Now this pack is normally used to power my Yaesu FT891. But it also makes an excellent grab and go pack for rapid deployment scenarios. So this portable power supply is a sibling of the 45 amp hour solar generator we built on the channel earlier this year. It also has the Bluetooth shunt built in, as well as relays controlling the DC outputs on the front panel of the pack. That's how I control the power to the Raspberry Pi and the other devices. One of the projects I'm considering in the future is getting statistics from my battery usage directly to the Raspberry Pi. It may seem irrelevant, but that type of information is critical to a successful off-grid deployment. It's also easy enough to do with Python on the Raspberry Pi. So as discussed in the beginning of the video, we really can't talk about a Raspberry Pi field computer without understanding how that Raspberry Pi field computer fits in the larger scope of our amateur radio field station. So in order to validate the Raspberry Pi field computer configuration and how it fits into our amateur radio field station, we took a trip just above the Arctic Circle. We would spend the first day at my buddy's cabin, the Slow Food Survivalist, a cabin which only has a wood stove and a fireplace as modern enmities. This cabin is not grid-tied in any way. Now the first day in the off-grid cabin was spent in relative comfort. For the next days, I would get my gear and equipment and set the tent up north of the off-grid cabin. So this would not only test the Raspberry Pi field computer, but it would put the entire amateur radio field station through its paces. I mean, realistically, we already decided to build this Raspberry Pi field computer. So why not go ahead and test it out in the field where it matters? Now we're going to get to the Raspberry Pi field computer and our off-grid communication shortly, but it's important to point out many of us have this romantic idea about field communications and what we're actually doing out there. Now in the real world, before we even unpack that radio equipment, before we even set it up, there's other tasks we have to do like collecting water or chopping wood and 
warming up the operating and living space. When we're talking about emergency communications, communications for preparedness, or off-grid communications, we don't just focus on that. We also need to take care of ourselves. For these type of off-grid excursions, it's critically important to understand where we're going, how we're going to get there, and what tools we need to accomplish our mission. Without accepting the amount of planning required for a successful excursion, no amount of engineering is actually going to lead to a successful outcome. Now, keeping all these things in mind, it was important to ensure the shelter was warm enough and the off-grid cabin was warm enough before the radio or the Raspberry Pi would be deployed. Doing so would ensure the Raspberry Pi field computer and our radio gear wouldn't be exposed to any unnecessary condensation and possible damage. So my first QSO with the Raspberry Pi field computer and the Yezu FT817ND was with Sierra Mike 4 India November Victor. The Raspberry Pi, the Yezu FT817ND, the audio codec, the USB audio sound card I used, as well as the 10 watt amplifier, all performed flawlessly. Even the real-time clock and the GPS were in agreement by the time, so I had no troubles at all with JS8 call, getting synced up, and getting right on the air. And again, this is what I'm talking about when I say we need to integrate our Raspberry Pi with our radio equipment. It only took me about 5 minutes to get set up. I plugged in my antenna, I plugged in my power supply, I booted up the Raspberry Pi, and I got on air. Now some operators are asking me why I insist on using a Raspberry Pi, why not a Windows machine? Well, you certainly can use a Windows machine, but I want to customize my system. I want the software running on my system which I want, and I don't want any other software or services running which I don't want. It's really hard to argue against a $35 rock-solid Linux computer. Especially when you're sitting in a tent or a cabin above the Arctic Circle, sending out your signal thousands of kilometers or miles away with a 10-watt radio and a Raspberry Pi. Now, while we watch the rest of these QSOs, let's take a moment to talk about why we actually use narrow bandwidth weak signal network modes. When we talk about operating off-grid, whether you're in a tent or a cabin above the Arctic Circle, whether you're circumnavigating the world on a yacht, or perhaps you're trying to sit out the latest blizzard or ice storm. Whatever the off-grid scenario you're operating in, there's always going to be tasks to do other than the communications we're carrying out. This trip and many like it would have been a complete failure if we weren't harvesting and processing wood, warming the cabin or warming the tent, chopping a hole in the ice to collect water or collecting snow to melt on the wood stove. The reality when off-grid, grid down, or in the field, we're always going to have these other tasks which support the actual communications. And actually, it's for this reason I've settled on narrow bandwidth modes with networking like JS8 Call. As you see, right now in the video, I'm actually sitting there and typing keyboard-to-keyboard -keyboard chat with another operator. If I were using some other mode, perhaps SSB or CW, RTTY, PSK31, Olivia, Contestia, none of these modes offer the networking functionality and weak signal performance as we have with JS8 Call. So even if I'm not there at the keyboard to answer right now, the operator can still leave a message on my station. My station will grab that message and alert me that a message has arrived. This is the reason we've integrated the Raspberry Pi field computer with our QRP Go Kit. Add the messaging and networking functionality of JS8 Call and we don't have to sit at the keyboard constantly to receive a message. There are simply so many other tasks to do when we're operating an off-grid field station that the idea of sitting in front of our radios constantly in a grid-down scenario or while operating off-grid is just ridiculous. Small and energy-efficient computers like the Raspberry Pi can easily be integrated with our radio communications gear. The narrow bandwidth data modes like JS8 Call allow us to use less power from our radios but still make reliable communications. This way of operating allows us to use our time more effectively at the field station for things which are more important. Like collecting and chopping wood and building a fire in our wood stoves. 
or collecting snow in the kettle so that we can melt it for coffee, tea, or to make food. Perhaps now you're starting to understand why we've built the Raspberry Pi the way we have. Our Raspberry Pi field computer knows where it is, it knows what time it is, and it's able to reliably run our communications applications off the grid. It's never going to tell you to stand by while it installs an update, and it's never going to tell you to wait while it installs something you didn't ask for. This combination of a Raspberry Pi field computer, JS8 call running on that Raspberry Pi, and my radio equipment actually make it possible to enjoy life at the field station even when we're above the Arctic Circle in the dead of winter. So you see, it's unrealistic to think about a Raspberry Pi field computer without understanding how it fits in the greater context of the off-grid amateur radio field station. Perhaps you're doing summits on the air. Perhaps you're doing some sort of emergency communications deployment. Or perhaps you're just camping with your kids. You see what I've done here with my Yaesu FT817ND and this Raspberry Pi field computer. There certainly are some CW rigs which have a lot less current draw, but they're also not able to capture that traffic for you while you're out chopping wood or collecting water or snow. Commercial and military rigs have this type of functionality built in. They have messaging built in. Unfortunately, amateur radios don't. But because of the Raspberry Pi, we're now able to add this type of advanced functionalities, customize it, and make it useful for ourselves in the field. Personally, I enjoy very much the idea of setting up my field station in some remote location, setting up my radio, turning on the Raspberry Pi, and knowing I have a constant connection to the group of operators who I normally chit-chat with on the air with JS8 Cole every day. Because of this Raspberry Pi, the right software running on it, and my QRP radio, I'm able to send a message to my wife's phone to say, hey, this is my location and I got here okay. Or perhaps I've injured myself with an axe while harvesting wood. With applications running on the Raspberry Pi like Pat Winlink and PSK Mail, medical advice isn't actually that far away. Not to mention access to the JS8 call network running on your Raspberry Pi. And what about when I'm trying to actually get a good night's sleep? The Raspberry Pi doesn't need to sleep. It's not going to get tired and it's not going to stop working. Since that little Raspberry Pi field computer tirelessly worked overnight to ensure we had constant communications with the outside world. We don't have this luxury with voice modes. We don't have this luxury with CW. We don't have this luxury with FT8 or RTTY or Olivia or Contestia. Someone said to me, why don't we use all the tools at our disposal, Julian? And I said, well, wait a minute. Why don't we build a better toolbox which features the tools we need? Anyway, I suppose I've rambled on long enough. But I hope this video has given you some perspective about the Raspberry Pi field computer and how we integrate it into our amateur radio field stations. If you're supporting this channel through Patreon, PayPal, or simply sharing my content, you're absolutely magnificent and I couldn't do it without you. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, leave me a comment and a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.